Hey there, it's Brittany and welcome back to I think day six of the 13 days of Halloween jewelry tutorials. Um, today we're going to be doing an earring blitz. I know a lot of you love that. Um, the earrings that I came up with are a little primitive today, like uh, not as, well some of them are blingy, like come on we have to do some rhinestones, but a lot of them are um, not as flashy as some of the earrings that I make usually. But let's get started. Um, we're go you're gonna see some beads that we've used throughout the, um, the 13 days already and some new ones. So today I'm using mainly um, this pair of wire and it's in art metal and 22 gauge. And today for the first earring, we're actually gonna use the um, metal block and our ball peen hammer. Um, I'm not going to need too much wire for most of these earrings. One, we will use quite a bit, but um, they're all very easy earrings. I'm not going crazy today. That's not the purpose of the 13 days of Halloween. It's to get you excited about Hall Halloween and get you creating. So, all right, I'm just going to cut off a little piece of wire. And I'm gonna create um, a loop at the bottom. Not, and it doesn't have to be a perfect loop, but it's just gonna be like a simple loop. Like that, okay? Nothing special, it doesn't look like that, that's fine. If yours looks more triangular, that's fine. We don't even need both um, earrings to be exactly the same in this portion. So be careful with your hammer because it did hit my finger earlier. <laughs> I wasn't laughing then, but um, I'm just gonna hit this several times until it's flat. And I'm dragging out a little bit to um, widen the, the wire itself. I'm trying to only hit my loop and not the wire up here. All right, so we have a flattened loop. I'm not hanging anything from it. I just like the way it looked. I'm gonna put that away. We don't need that anymore. And then I have some beads from Heidi that I got for Halloween last year. And um, I just love how these candy corn look. I used to be, really like eating candy corn. No, not so much. I do like the candy corn pumpkins. I think they taste a little bit different though, to me. Uh, I don't know that there's any scientific um, research behind that. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide on my candy corn. Um, we've, oop, and see I pulled too hard and it opened my loop a little bit. So I'm gonna just close that back up, push it up against my candy corn. So we've already seen me use this spacer in um, the pumpkin bracelet. Um, in one of the days and I really tried to get the, these cube beads into that bracelet but it didn't work out and then I'm just gonna put this on top of that triangle then I'm gonna do a wire wrapped loop at the top Like I said, super easy, very primitive um, look with the handmade beads and the African glass and the matte um, check glass. But I, I've been seeing a lot of like artisan components used in some other um, earrings everywhere. And I was just like, oh, I have a lot of artisan beads. Let's, let's pop some of those out. I don't know where the hoarder in me went, but I was like, I have to use Heidi beads today. So um, we've got our wire wrapped loop at the top. Mine's super messy. And I have um, like a darker antique nickel um, bead uh, ear wire. And then I'm just going to put that on. Doesn't matter which side because the earring is double sided. And there is our first pair of earrings now like I said we're going easy today for the most part um, you could do this without a metal block if you don't have one uh, but I really like how rustic these earrings are and we've got mixed metal in there with the brass as well so there's pair one super simple now the next one um, <laughs> I think you're gonna think I'm obsessed with skulls because we have three pairs of skull earrings in this um, uh, tutorial, but I'm, I'm having fun with them. I'm having fun with them. I, some people think they're scary. I mean, they're, they're a body part. Everybody has one. <laughs> so, uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a layered skull earring. I was digging through my beads and obviously we used this style um, in the Skull King necklace, but I used it in green, but I had a red one. And then I was, while I was looking through my, my earrings, I noticed I had several different sizes of these smaller skulls. So I had a tiny yellow, then a, a bigger pink, and now a slightly, and I do mean slightly, larger turquoise than the pink. And then I was like, well, what if we just made a stacked skull earring? One piece, ready to go. And then I have two um, old spacers. I'm gonna go ahead and come up through my skull. Bring the back around just like we did with the Skull King earrings. And I'm just gonna do, gonna do two really tight loops here. But one is fine, okay? And I'm gonna cut right in the back. I think this is, you know, I always say this is my favorite, this is my favorite, but I, I like them all, I made them all. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my pliers and just tighten that wire by grabbing it and twisting like that. So we've got ourselves a skull head pin, basically. I'm gonna slide on my blue, one of my spacers, my pink, one of my spacers and then my yellow. Now you have a couple options here. You, I think it looks great with all of them facing the same way. And that was what I was really going for. But then I was like, oh, it's kind of creepy if they start all looking off in different directions. Somebody's always got their eye on you if you do it that way. Um, I just think it's a fun, creepy earring. And uh, I think there are some of us, if we wear earrings, who would absolutely wear it throughout the rest of the year. All right, so I am just going to do a really white, uh, messy wrap up here, pretty thick. Bring this down. And the closer, like the tighter you wrap to the beads, the less they'll move around. So if you don't want them uh, to move around a lot, you really want it to be tight. If you don't care if it's moving around, you can just um, messy wrap your heart away without really tightening it up. So I am going to start and then I'm going to reposition my skulls as I go along. There we go, it's starting to tighten up there. These um, wraps that are on top of the other wraps are not making it tighter. If I want it to be tighter, and my little loop is struggling here, um, I would come in and try and get a, a wrap to in between this wrap and the, the skull below it, so it could tighten and make, the, make their be less so there was less space um, for the beads to take up see how I got that to kind of squish in there all right I'm gonna move this guy back around like I said I wanted a big messy wrap at the top all right I'm gonna go ahead and snip. And then I'm gonna add on the ear wire. And there we go. I think this is my favorite pair. <laughs> Just because they're bright and fun, but also creepy. And they kind of look like um, something you'd see in a crypt, but maybe not in those co that color scheme. All right, the next pair we're gonna go with is um, has a similar bead, but it's larger. We've got a larger regular skull. Now this one's gonna be a little more muted, a little bit more primitive again, and just, I think this one's creepy, like silently creepy. Maybe it's loudly creepy once you see it. But I'm just gonna do the same exact wire wrap. And you can use the same technique, but get wildly different results. And I think I've shown that a lot on this channel. I'm gonna come up and do just a couple wraps, something pretty small so you don't really see it. Let's 
snip that and tighten. Um, I'm going to use that triangle again. I love these triangle beads. I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out of them, but I have like hundreds to go before that happens. Um, put that on. And then I have two black African recycled glass Ashanti beads or Ashanti beads or Ashanti beads. I'm not sure how you say it. Um, and then I'm going to put another brass on top. And then we're going to complete that with another messy wrap. This is, that would be a really cool uh, pendant too, which who knows, maybe I'll turn it into a pendant since I'm not really going to wear these unless, you know, I haven't worn dangly earrings for a long time. Sometimes I can wear them for like three hours and then my ears start hurting and the keloids start developing. But I think I could wear these for a little bit. They're, they are kind of heavy though. All right. I'm just going to do a, um, messy wrap. Save this wire for my next project. Grab a gunmetal ear wire. I know I don't use gunmetal a lot, so I think it's a, it's a good metal for Halloween. Close that up. And there's our, what, are we on third pair already? Bold, but also kind of muted because of the aged look on the bone. And this isn't bone, this is magnesite or halite. And, but it looks like bone. And then we have um, the African glass beads and the African brass beads. So I really love that. If I, if, if I saw somebody walking and wearing these, I'd be like, oh, where'd you get those? <laughs> Probably with any of these, I'd be like, well, you know, any kind of earring, to be very, very honest. I have no shame when it comes to jewelry. Um, next, we're going to work with a cute little briolette. And here I am going to cut quite a bit of wire because I want to wire wrap down the briolette. Stick my wire through, come up one side. And we're just gonna wire wrap a couple times, making sure that it's at the top of my briolette. And then we'll wire wrap down the briolette. Man, that noise is just the wire hitting my light up here. Coming back around. I'm gonna hold that there and just start wire wrapping. This one might be a little curvy. Oh. Sometimes wire wraps get away from you, or at least from me anyway. And then I'm just going to come down. I'm not going to worry about the top right now. I want to make sure that I get the body done the way I want it. And then I'll come back, back up and fill in where I need to. And then at this point, I can put that down and wire wrap with my hands. But if it's too hard for you to wire wrap with your hands, use your pliers, do whatever feels comfortable. And we're just going to come down the top of that briolette. Like that until I've covered up the wires on both sides. And then we had some filling in to do. He's a little skinny necked at the top. <laughs> so I'm going to come up and I'm just going to fill in that wire wrap. This one is going to be a little bit taller than my other one because uh, it got away from me, but I don't care because it's very Halloweeny. It kind of looks like a witch's hat almost, you know, 
and uh, symmetrical can be boring. But there we go, we've got them wire wrapped. I'm just gonna cut off in the back. I am going to take that leftover piece, start a little wire wrap here. Slip my bralette on. off and then Mr. Cat is making an appearance again so we're going to slide Mr. Cat on there we go Mr. Cat and then we're going to grab one of these um, onyx and rhinestone beads actually I'm not 100% sure that that's onyx but I don't think it really matters and I am going to messy wrap at the top this guy's got some bling, but he's also kind of muted with that antique um, silver wire. Here we go. Now that's the front. I want to make sure that my cat hangs the right way. There we go. I love it. <laughs> that bead almost looks like a crown on it. Grab an ear wire. Slip him on. And we have our cute little cat earrings. I love these. I love the, the mix of sparkle and matte. Um, we've got sparkle here, sparkle here, and then the cat is matte, and so is our wire. Love those. So we've done four. We have one left. We have one more bead from Heidi, a little jack-o'-lantern. I have our monster eye or evil eye from the other day. I have a little check glass black bell flower and a really cool crystal skull from Jesse James Beads. This was in the Eternal Mix, and that was from the, um, oh, Eternal Love Mix, and that was from um, the Trick or Treat Party we did. So I need an eye, a head pin. I'm just gonna make a dangle out of my pumpkin. Cool. Then I'm going to take my wire and then I'm going to just do a little simple loop. Like that. Slide on my flower. And then I'm going to slide on my crystal skull. And he's going to kind of sit on that crystal or on that flower it's going to be almost like his neck okay and we want it facing forward like this so the loop is facing like that so our pumpkin can hang underneath goldie's kind of disgusted with me she wants food and then we're just going to do a wire wrapped loop at the top I'm gonna kind of do this pretty tight because I want the skull to face a certain way. So just like we did with the other skull um, stack, I'm just making it tighter by getting underneath that one that's already in there. And look, he's not moving around. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and snip. I'm gonna hang my pumpkin. And then I'm just going to do a little link 
with my monster eye wire wrapped. So I'll start here. Just kind of finagle it to where we'd like it to be. I love it. All of them have eyes, but you know, I just love the sparkle from the, the skull. It's super creepy. And then we'll just put our ear wire on. Excited about these. All five pairs are just so fun and kind of out of the norm, I would say, but they're they're still Halloween. I don't think you can have a norm for Halloween, but anyway. So there's the fifth pair. We had our crystal skulls. We had our creepy skulls. We had our little cat prince or princess. We had our stacked skulls, which just make me so happy, and our primitive candy corn. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know which hair was your favorite. Um, could you see yourself wearing any of these? And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Bye-bye. You don't like being in the car, do you? Mm. You've been whining the whole time. Except for when I take a video, then you look happy. What's that about? What's that about, Philly girl? Oh.